I could build websites in Webflow 24-7. Now let's build daily interaction number 11. Hey, what's up everyone and good Monday. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Monday for you, but uh, today is daily interaction number 11. And uh, so we're starting on Monday. Um, also, I'm not wearing a, a sweater. I decided to kind of change it up a bit. I thought I'd be wearing a sweater for all, for all the videos. Um, but yeah, it's a new shirt. Uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, today we're gonna be working with uh, daily interaction number 11 and we're gonna create a menu item animation on hover. So here, when I hover over these menu items, we have this interesting animation. All right, so first we're gonna build out the menu items and this block in the background, and then we'll add the interaction. Uh, so this was actually inspired by this website here, cuberto.com. Uh, the easing is a bit different, but the animation is, is fairly the same. All right, and there's a lot of other interesting effects on this site. Uh, that we might go over in another uh, daily interaction. All right, so this is what we will be building today. Uh, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also, be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. Okay, so here I have a blank Webflow project, and we'll start with the daily interaction class naming convention. So it's D dash the daily interaction number. So today is 11 and then the element. So every element on the site will have a D dash 11 in front of it. And this is for consistency purposes. And so that we know we're working with daily interaction number 11. Um, if you've watched my other video tutorials, you've probably heard me say that a few times, uh, but yeah, it's just so we can keep the, uh, the class naming convention there. All right, um, so yeah, the next thing we're gonna do is add a section. So I'll add an element, I'll add a section, and I'll give it the class name d-11-section. Uh, for this, I'll set the height to 100 VH, so it spans the full height of the viewport, and it will be the full width as well. Then I'll scroll down to background. I'll set the background color to black, and I'll scroll up to display setting, set it to flex, set it to horizontal, uh, justify center, and align center. So anything I place within this section will be in the center. Um, so now I'll add uh, an element. I'm gonna add a link block, or actually how do I wanna do this here? Um, let's add it, yeah, a div block, and I'm gonna call this D-11 menu wrapper. So we're gonna place these menu items in a wrapper. Um, it's not really a menu per se, it's just a few links. Uh, how they have it here, but uh, just so we can move it around easier if we later want to move it around. Uh, by placing it in a wrapper, it's easy to move all the menu items. Um, and for this menu wrapper, I'm going to give it a display setting of uh, flex, justify center, and align center. So the menu items are uh, next to each other. Um, so next, I'll add another element. I'll add a link block uh, so we can link it, link it out to something. And I'll call this D-11 link block. Um, and for this, I'm going to set a position of relative um, because we're going to have an absolute position div inside of it. And I want the elements inside of it to be relative to the link block and not relative to some other parent element. So by setting it to relative, anything inside of it will be relative to it. All right. So that <laughs> that's all I have to do there. Um, so now let's add the menu item text. So I'll add an element, I'll add a text block, and we notice it has kind of this funky blue color with an underline, um, and that's because it's, it's inside of a link block. So when you put text inside of a link block, uh, Webflow gives it the hyperlink styling. Um, so we'll change that in a second. Let's give this the class name D-11 menu item text. And then I'll go into the navigator right up here. I'll open up the the different elements, and I'll select the link block. Then I'll go down to typography, and here for the underline, I'll say none, so we don't have that underline. Then I'll go back into the navigator, I'll select the menu item text, and I'll style it. So here in typography, I'll change the font to circular bold, set the font weight to bold, um, I'll set the color to white, and let me double click inside of the text and I'll rename it so we have 
uh, websites. Let's see what we have here, websites, app, and branding. So yeah, let me go back in here. So there we go, and I'll change the font size to, let's say 34, and the line height to, let's say 40. All right, so I hold down sh uh, yeah, shift to go in increments of 10 when I'm changing the font size and the font or, or the line height. All right, so there we have the text, and now I want to add that um, that rectangle in the background. So what I'll do is go to the navigator, and I'm going to add the, the rectangle and the link block. So I'll select the link block. I'll add an element. I'll add a div block, and I'll call this uh, d-11 rectangle. And for this, I'm going to set a position <clears throat> excuse me, of uh, absolute. And I think that's all I have to do there. Let me double check here on the site. I think it's absolute. And yeah, so just a position of absolute, that's correct. Okay, so set it to absolute. And then we're gonna set a width of 100% and a height of five uh, pixels. And then I'll get, or 10 pixels. And then I'll give it the background color of magenta, and it should be in the center. Oh, let's see if we, for the link block, if we set a flex property. Yeah, so for the link block, we want to set the display setting to flex, then uh, justify center, and align center. All right, and then for the text, we'll go to the menu item text, and for the position, we'll set it to relative, and then we'll set a z-index value higher than zero so that the text is in front of the that block there. So there we have the block and then we have the text in front of it. So by setting it to a position of relative, we can place other elements and you know we, we can change the, the layer properties of elements. And for the menu item text, I'm gonna add some padding to change the, the width of the rectangle behind it. So I'm gonna go to, yeah, select the menu item text and then in the navigator, I'll go to styles Set the left padding to 5, and set the right padding to 15. Um, so it just gives it an interesting offset so the text isn't perfectly in the center, and that rectangle is a bit uh, wider than the text. All right, so we have everything we need here. So yeah, what I'll do now is I'll copy this a few times. So I'll select the D-11 link block. I'll hit Command-C to copy, then Command-V to paste until I have three, um, three menu items. Then I'll double click and I'll call this app, or yeah, is it app? Yeah, app. And I'll double click and I'll call this branding. Then I'll select D-11 link block. Um, I'll add some left and right margin to add some spacing in between them. So I'm holding down Alt to add it to the left and the right. So we have a left margin of 15 and a right margin of 15. Um, and there we go. So we have all the elements we need. So now we can add the interaction. Um, so for this, what I'll do is I'll go into, yeah, I'll select the navigator and I'll select D-11 link block uh, because I want this interaction to occur when we hover over the link block. So I'll select it, I'll go into interactions, and here for element trigger, we're going to add a mouse hover interaction. And on hover, we're going to start an animation, and I'm going to add a new timed animation, and I'll call this D-11 mouse in. So this is what's going to occur when we hover our mouse over the link block. And for this, I want that rectangle in the background to scale uh, vertically. So it, it creates this effect when we hover over, the rectangle expands, the text change, changes color, and the rectangle changes color as well. Um, so let me go back in here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll select the rectangle here, the D-11 rectangle. I'll go into interactions, I'll add a new timed action, and I'll say scale. And here for the scale, I'm going to unconstrain it so we don't change the X and the Y at the same time. So I'll just uncheck this lock here, this lock symbol. And on the Y, because we want it to scale vertically, I'll say six. And that might be a bit much, let me try five. Uh, yeah, let's do five, I think five will, will be a bit nicer. Um, and then I want to change the text color. Oh, we want to add some easing to this. So I'll say ease out expo and a duration of 0.2. So it happens very quickly. 
Um, Ease Out Expo is just a personal preference. You don't have to, you know, you can choose any easing you'd like for it to kind of go go with the styling of your site. And let me try. Yeah, let's let's do six. Um, yeah, no, for some reason I like five. Okay, yeah, so we'll do a scale of five. Um, the next thing we'll do is change the the text, the color of the text. So I'll select the menu item text, go into the interaction. I'll add a new timed action and I'll say text color. So for this, I'm going to change the text color to black. Okay, I'm going to add an easing of ease out expo and a duration of 0.2. And I'm going to start it with the rectangle expanding. So I'll just click, hold and drag and place it on top of the rectangle. And now I want the rectangle to change the background color. So I'll select it. I can select it here in the timed action because we're already using it. I'll add a new timed action and I'll say BG color for background color. And here I'll change the background color to white. And I'll start it with the rest of the timed actions. And I'll say ease out expo and a duration of 0.2. So now when I preview, I hover over, we have that interaction. All right, so I want this to occur for the other ones as well. Um, so what I can do is I can, uh, yeah, first I can select the, the different elements here. And rather than affecting the selected element, because as we see, we're only affecting this first link block that says websites. So rather than affecting just this one, I want to affect uh, any children element of the menu trigger. So the menu trigger is the link block. And we know these other ones have the link block class name, so we can apply it to these ones as well. So I'll select rectangle. And here for effect, rather than selected element, I'll select class. So action will affect multiple elements with the same class. And then rather than all elements with this class, I'll say only children with this class. So we know if we go to the navigator that the rectangle and the menu item text are children of the link block because they're inside of it. So the link block is the parent element and these elements are children elements. So only those specific, uh, only that specific text and rect rectangle will be affected when we hover over this specific link block. Uh, so if I click and I hover, we notice the first one still works. Um, the other thing we need to do, we need to set the menu item text to class and only children with this class. And we also need to close this here. And for the trigger settings, we want to, rather than trigger an element, we want to trigger a class. So any element with the class name D-11 link block will be a trigger. So now if I go to the navigator, all the link blocks are triggers and they're only affecting children within the trigger. So only the specific text and the specific rectangle will be affected for each link block. All right, if you have any questions about anything I went over, just let me know in the comment section below. Um, I know it takes a bit of time to, to start working with um, you know, children classes, parent classes, and affecting you know, classes rather than elements. So I'd be happy to discuss that with you. We can either discuss it in the forum or um, in the comments of this video. All right, so now if I preview and I hover, they each uh, have that interaction. Um, so the last thing we need to do is apply the mouse out interaction so that when we hover off the element, we have kind of the reversed animation. So here in the interaction on hover out, I'm going to start an animation. I'm going to duplicate D-11 mouse in. So I'll select these three dots. I'll select duplicate and I'll select D-11 mouse in two. I'll click on it and I'll rename it to D-11 mouse out. And for this, um, I want all the same interactions except for the scale. We're going to change the scale back to one. Um, so here for the Y, um, I'll set it to one. So it goes back to its original scale or original size. Then for the menu item text, I'm going to change it back to white. And for the rectangle, I'm going to change it back to magenta. All right. So when we hover off, it just goes back to its original um, state with the with its colors and scale. And it already has the class. We're already affecting a class and only children with the class um, because we duplicated the first interaction. Um, and it has all the easing, the ease out expo, and the duration of 0.2. So now if I preview, I hover over, we have that interaction, and it's occurring for all of them. 
Um, and that's it. That's how we created this menu item um, animation on hover in Webflow. Uh, so that's the power of Webflow and using, um, you know, affecting class names and, uh, you know, triggering different class names. We can, we can apply the same interaction to multiple elements and create a nice effect on the website or on, or on our website. All right, so this was inspired by Cuberto. Um, we will cover a few other interactions. This is a really nice website where he's just doing a really, uh, a really nice job with a lot of these animations. All right, looks good. So that is it for daily interaction number 11, the menu item animation on hover. To view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next daily interaction.